Several people ask me about how can I compare um, living in Spain to living in the Philippines and how can I relate to the pricing of both and how can it be at a similar cost. First thing I want to say is it's, it's all about standard of living. Um, in the Philippines, I've lived on as little as 5000 a month and but most expensive, 25000 a week. The fact is, it's all about standards. Um, so I would say if you're living on 5000 a month, like, like I did back in 2007, um, no, you can't do it. But if you're living at the same sort of level I was in the Philippines um, from the last, last few years, I would say that Spain's a better deal. There's several reasons why. First one is if you're self-employed in Spain, it means that your family's pretty much covered for medical insurance. Uh, the schooling's then free. Um, obviously, you still got to pay for school meals, things like that. But that's about 250 euros a month, um, which will give you, like I says, medical, uh, also pension rights as well, because obviously if you're paying into the system, you can get out of the system. So that's another point um, that it's not relevant for some people because they're retired, retired already. So they don't need to contribute into the system and don't want to contribute <laughs> into the system if they don't have to. Um, but for me, we're, we're here long term, so we're paying into the system and getting the benefit of the system being there. Um, one thing I will say though is I actually put in more into a system than I take out anyway, so it's not as if we're here for um, the benefit of the economy, because the economy is pretty much tanked at the moment. Um, which gets on to the next thing. Uh, rentals. Two bedroom rental, 300 euros. Uh, it's about 240, 250 pounds, which comes in about 16,000 pesos. Now, 16,000 pesos will get you a three, four bedroom house in the in the Philippines, but it won't be to the same quality of the the stuff that we're getting in Spain. So, you, I'm right by the sea. It's, it's a two bedroom, fully furnished house. It's got everything I want. It's got everything right on its doorstep. I don't have people littering in the street. We have a market behind us on a Wednesday. Um, by Wednesday afternoon, the trucks are already out with the sweepers, cleaning up any rubbish that the market's made. It's not dumped in the street the way it is in the Philippines. We don't have open sewers in the street. Um, to get the standard we have here, you'd have to be living in quite a high-end subdivision in the Philippines. We have play parks within walking distance. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how, but we don't want play parks. It's not just the play parks, it's the quality of the food, it's the restaurants. In the Philippines, my food budget is normally about eight to 10,000 a week. Um, some bottles of wine I buy there for about 2,000 pesos a bottle. But the quality is shocking because it doesn't travel well. But at the same time, it's all that's available for the sort of stuff I like. So I can't get it there. I can buy bottles here for less than a euro which were better quality than a lot of the stuff I was buying in the Philippines, which were costing me 10 to 10, 15 pounds a bottle. And yes, you can get cheap stuff, I think, but... Well, even the cheap stuff, it, it's not comparable. Because the cheap wine here is actually all right. Cheap, the good stuff in the Philippines is often dire. The, the, there's some good wines, but you have to be very hit and miss, depending if it's been sat on the port, um, getting warm all day for a week. Um, so... You can't really compare that. Seafood, great in the Philippines. Spain, fantastic. Fruit, Philippines is a bit off and on. Um, all depends when you get it. Spain, you can get grade A at the supermarkets and you might get grade B at the market behind us. The difference being is you can pay uh, about one euro fifty for a kilo or something at supermarket where you get the other ones at the back here for five kilos for a couple of euros um, for, the, for oranges. Now, the thing with that is, is we actually convert the, the oranges into orange juice um, because it's actually obviously better quality and obviously there's no additives because it's actually fresh oranges that we're using, we're not, which 
even in the UK can be quite expensive if you're actually doing that. So things like that, fresh food, it's better. Um, like I said, the seafood, it's a bit hit and miss. Although this, I find the seafood here is cheaper than the Philippines. Unless you're buying black market. Um, things like pork, pork, beef, everything's here. Um, beef could be a bit expensive, but uh, but in the Philippines, try and get some good beef. It's near impossible. So those are those are the main reasons. Because the thing is, I'm not at retirement age, um, which throws in another curveball here. Because the fact is, the average guy going to the Philippines is at retirement age, but also the work prospects in the Philippines is pretty pretty slim, and the salaries are naff. Here in Spain. There's at least half a million Brits. Now that doesn't take into account the Dutch, the French, the Belgian, and everybody else that's here, all requiring um, serving during the summer holidays. So there's seasonal work here, but also there's people that make money just in those um, holiday seasons that live here all year round because they make enough money in that time to live here long term which you couldn't do in the Philippines. Not as easily. I mean, okay, you can do exactly what I do with the internet stuff and you make an income on the internet. Um, and I did that in the Philippines. And it's probably harder to do here because there's a lot of stuff, because it's a Western standard, a lot of stuff starts creeping in where you're taxed on things and you get these... They like to have everything automatically paid out your bank where the Philippines you've got a bit more control over it if you can't afford internet for example you can just go around the internet cafe once a week or whatever you know you don't need to buy it but here I find that mobile internet is pretty naff it's over it's expensive for the amount we use because most of them are like one two two gigabyte contracts we go through um, at least three gigabytes a day <laughs> so we struggle to get the internet we want on phones um, and the, the internet on the actual building at the moment because of our location isn't great either. We may end up having to change it for an antenna one later on. Um, at the moment it's no rush. But those things are comparable to the Philippines. That's, that's the funny thing. The bad side of Spain is exactly the same as the Philippines. The bureaucracy is, I can see where it come from. The corruption, I can see where it come from. A lot of the stuff that is the problems in the Philippines all came from Spain. So, on that side, it's, it's business as usual. But on the plus side, can you hear a motorbike? No? Can't hear a jeepney with spewing uh, diesel fumes? Because we all have tight EU regulations here. The quality of life, like I said, is the reason that Spain is better. Um, and I know some people live in remote locations, but we, we could do exactly the same in Spain. That's my point. There's no, there's no uh, downside. The other advantage I've got here is because of the way we're setting up, I'm going to be hopping to the UK every week um, because obviously I'm going to continue work. But the joke being that renting and living in Spain and flying every week works out cheaper than a house in the UK if we rented or bought one because of the, the UK economy is so naff at the moment and taxing people to death that actually work for a living. Um, so there's no downside on Spain, I've got to admit. That, well, sorry, I, I say that. If you're used to things being efficient like, paper, efficient like paperwork, um, you're in the wrong place, but I'm used to bad paperwork after dealing with stuff in the Philippines. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sp Spain's great.